Hello, hello, all. How are we today? Let me know if you can hear me, and we will get straight into it. Can everyone hear me? Okay, fantastic. See who's here. Hello, Lydia. Happy Tuesday. Hello, Denise. Hi, Sandy. Thank you so much, uh, Rowan, for the super sticker. Thank you so, so much. Hello, Sandy. Palena. Oh, Movo. I feel like I haven't seen your name for a while. <laughs> hello, Alita. Carolyn. Elaine. Cookies and cream. Yes, hello to everyone. Uh, Lucy Wynn. I mentioned to a friend about starting a Sussex channel. She told me not a good idea because uh, you would spend time in chat arguing with trolls and won't stop until you get the last word. Yeah, I just ignore the trolls and just stick to the subject matter at hand. Hello, Andrine. But please do. If you feel like starting a Sussex channel, do it. I'll definitely support you. The more the merrier, especially now that um, hater channels are um, meeting their maker and actually another hater channel got deleted today so we'll get into that later on in the show oh elaine your great granddaughter athena was born at 5 30 
weighing eight pounds. Mum and baby are good. Congratulations, Elaine. So happy for you. What a beautiful blessing. Kisses for the baby. I'm sure she's chubby and cute. <laughs> um, all right, I think most of the usual suspects are here. Almost 300 in the chat. Thumbs up, everyone. Hi, Trifa Dilly. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Janine. Hi, Sister Anne. Annie. All righty, all righty. Let's get to it. Hi, Susie Q. Right, let's get into it today. So, the drama for the Royal Tour rumbles on. And now it's official. Uh, Jamaican government has already begun process of removing Queen as head of state. This comes after Jamaica's PM Andrew Holness said there is no question that Jamaica has to become a republic following Barbados, removing the Queen as its head of state in November. Multiple political sources, including from within Jamaica's government, say the ball started rolling despite significant resistance from key government figures. A general consensus has been reached. And top level talks commented weeks ago, and a figure has been appointed who is expected to oversee the nation's transition into republic. It's understood, worth remembering that it won't be an overnight process. Far from quick, and a referendum is required. And I guess it goes without saying that the whole situation with Harry and Meghan and how Meghan was treated, I think, is really what has kind of helped get this process to what it is now. I feel like um, this is something that Jamaica and the Caribbean nations and all the Commonwealth nations um, that still have the Queen as the head of state and are still connected to empire in that way through the Commonwealth have been wanting for some time. It just needed a catalyst. And the protests weren't uh, massive. There were, there was, I think there was maybe just like a couple hundred people, but still uh, pretty sizable, pretty visible, and definitely not, I think, what William and Catherine were expecting. <laughs> Um, but I do have a theory um, about something, and this is something that a couple of people on Twitter have said today. It's interesting to note that, uh, yes, Rohini, twerking here, twerking here, twerking to Beanie Man. It's interesting to note that um, Charles went, and thank you very much, Lottie, for the super sticker. Charles went for Barbados's, uh, I guess you could say, goodbye ceremony. And that, in some ways, I guess you could argue, made him look a little bit more progressive, in a way. The fact that it almost like, um, like a humble bow-out. And I don't know how exactly the royal tours are organised, but I'm assuming that the royals who are a little bit more higher up would have some say in in kind of how it how it goes and who goes to what places. So I just have a theory, and a couple of people have had put this theory forward also that perhaps Charles went to Barbados to to make himself look good, but sent William and Catherine to Jamaica, kind of knowing that it would be a disaster and set them up for failure. And it has been an absolute uh, failure, because can you imagine if it was Charles and Camilla and um, that had gone? especially with people still very much um, angry about what happened to Diana. So that's just a theory. I'm not, I'm not putting that out as, as fact. But however way you put it, this is not going the way the Cambridges wanted it to go. Janine, can you believe uh, this Raheem Sterling is on his way to Jamaica, invited by Egg and very disappointed? Uh, I am so sorry for my ignorance, but can you please tell me who Raheem Sterling is? <laughs> so, I'm so sorry uh, if he's some kind of uh, prominent figure. But um, wait, it's coming to me. Right, wait, Sterling. Wait, Sterling. Isn't it? Is it? Wait, no, he's a footballer, right? Isn't he a footballer? That rings a bell. That rings a bell. Please, someone tell me in the comment section. Um, but I'm guessing they're 
um, there's someone important to Jamaica. Um, oh, you're not uh, late, Connie. You're not late at all. Uh, Sister Anne, the Jamaicans told the languages to stay in their yard. <laughs> the Shambridges decided to ignore the people's request. Yeah. I mean, this is meant to be a charm offensive, but there's no charm. So is it just an offensive then? Because there has been no charm. Um, I'll show you what charm looks like. This is what charm looks like. This is what charm looks like. Oh, done. If you can see it, because it's oh, there we go. This is yeah. This is what charm looks like. Harry, look at how cute Harry looked there. Look at how happy those girls are. <laughs> Harry was shaking his hips. Uh, um, and yeah. Um, as the attorney, attorney and reparations advocate, Bert Samuel speaking on the arrival of Prince William and Kate Middleton to the island says that Jamaicans were very torn up to hear about Harry and Meghan's issue during the interview with Oprah Winfrey. I, I I I was hoping more people would show up, but this is at least a start. Chief for Diddy, a beanie man, <laughs> the Galgum <gum> sugar. <laughs> he had enough to say about them. Love him. Yes, for those of you who haven't seen it, I'm not going to play the clip because it was from ITV. Um, but a Jamaican performing artist Beanie Man did say that people don't care about William. He outright said it, and he they played this on uh, British TV. And no one cares about William and it's Harry that they care about. He literally said that. Uh, wait, does that sign say burn the pirates? Uh, yeah, burn those pirates who made deals with Henry Morgan to attack uh, Spanish something something. I guess that's something to do with history. Um, but yeah. Yes, yeah, C-Mac, we told them to go. You can't have a charm offensive if you're not charming. And this whole this whole trip is literally just coming off to the British public as one big holiday. I mean, they're making chocolate, they're going into the jungle, they're scuba diving. Oh yes, yes, um, William and Catherine were scuba diving. <laughs> That's the work they were doing. You know who else scuba dives? Because I just couldn't help myself. I do, I scuba dive guys. I'm officially probably the only uh, royal reporter who has a PADI certification. I am open water certified and can dive up to 18 meters. So yeah, that was me in Bali. Um, but yeah, uh, William, Catherine, they've been scuba diving. They've been making chocolate. They've been going into the jungle. Um, they've, they've just been having a good time looking at the Mayan ruins. I mean, really and truly, when you get to the bottom of it, what is the point of all of this? The people on these islands, the people of the Caribbean do not want them there. And it just seems like they're having one big fancy hol holiday at the expense of both the British taxpayer and also the um, people of the Caribbean who are partly paying for this. Uh, Vinnie Blair, royals and their cronies do not listen to what people are saying. They knew the feelings of Jamaicans, but they thought it didn't matter. They would just ignore. Yeah. And I also get the um, feeling... Um, <laughs> Rainy, his yes, daddy gave Will a spanking. I also just got the feeling that um, they were almost waiting for William and Catherine to come just so they could do it and it would have more impact and they would know that they are not welcome. Oh, yes, Raheem Stell, yes, English footballer. Now it rings a bell. Wasn't he one of the ones that um, missed the penalty during the England match? Uh, Charles and Camilla. Oh, hello, Edith. Hope you're doing well, sweetheart. Charles and Camilla was out and about today riding bikes. <laughs> I didn't see them. I didn't see them. Apparently, um, Ford Fiesta's husband is in Kenya or something. Like, literally nobody is paying attention. Okay, so I'm assuming that they're, they're sending Raheem Sterling over to do a photo op. Traitor. Um... Uh, Marsha, I believe Charles set up William and Kate. He's trying to tap um, them back down to their uh, place um, and to not try to upset him. Well, yes, there was that whole campaign they did of uh, Queen Kate and, you know, uh, Kate, Queen in, in waiting, Kate the peacemaker. And, you know, I, I really do feel like they were almost trying to vie to get get over Charles and Camilla and it just didn't work. Charles put them in their place and... Um, Charles isn't my favourite person by any means, but he 
he knows how to be a king in terms of playing the chessboard. He's very cunning. He's very sly in a way that um, I don't think William has mastered yet or ever will. Uh, Joyce, Kate and Willie went to the island to prove they didn't need Harry and Meghan. Now they realise, yes, we do, but it's too late. Yes, and, you know, this is this is what they're having to do. Copy on every level, right down to the wedges and the expressions. And I really do uh, agree with um, Duchess of Poms here, saying every time I see the shell of a woman, I feel anger, but I also feel extreme pity. This isn't her, this is Meghan. I can't imagine what it must feel like to never be enough and to be told told to the point where you have to dress, speak and act like someone else. And this is someone who was a royal in waiting for 10 years and a working royal for another decade and still can't master who she is as, as a person because she's never been allowed to find out whoever that is. She's been moulded by the firm and what the firm have moulded her to become does not fit with where we are in our current um, social climate. Mm. Yes, Jermaine, the lane bridges uh, were worn, but they refused to read the room. Mm. And Jane, well, they failed to see these governments are Charles's generation, William generation, which is millennials, they don't care. Yeah. I mean, let's let's just be honest. This generation cares more about a uh, bloody Kim Kardashian and, and Logan Paul and you know all these TikTok stars than they do about the royals. So it's an it's it's an uphill battle that they're just not winning. Matty Rambo, yes, my country people are showing up. Uh, big protect at the uh, big protest at the British Embassy. Yeah, it was good to see something. I, I would have liked to see something bigger. But at least I'll tell you what. At least we're not seeing too much of this. That's at least one good thing. Um, as one commentator said on Twitter, watching the royal tour footage of William and Catherine, I really feel the days of flying the flag in this manner are over. I find it toe curling that we expect the streets to be lined with Union Jack waving children and red carpets to be furled to welcome the British royals. And I agree. Mm. Oh, thank you, Twi Five Girls. <laughs> you make me blush, thank you. Uh, Abby Rosemary, look up the clip of the old lady who said, I wouldn't even turn up to see if I got paid. Wow. Yes, Movo. Harry and Meghan actually worked when they toured. Lydia, um, looks like fun. Yes, scuba diving is amazing, by the way. And don't let anybody tell you that it's the same as snorkeling because it's not. It's a completely different experience being that close to marine life than snorkeling is. So definitely give it a chance if you ever get to do it. It's worth it. Um, yeah, Rahini, they, they should just say it was a vacation. <laughs> just, uh, do you know what? I, I would have I would have actually just rather they just went on a vacation because they do that anyway and stop trying to cover it up with all of this nonsense. Because at least a vacation isn't an official visit. They're not doing anything political. And they could have just had their quiet vacation with all this hoorah-rah. How are you, Nickly Me? How are you doing? <laughs> Mandy, evening, everyone. Who wears a pink bottle of Gabiscon stomach medicine <laughs> to a jungle so overdressed? Ouch. Well, uh, since you brought that up, yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to play the clip. I think some of you might have seen it. Um, but this is of some of the press who were there to cover the event. And it would appear that they're just not getting the access that they would usually get. And they're pretty peed off about it. So this is what they had to say. Hey, but we're trying to do a job. Is that... Oh, 
what waste time. So you can hear the uh, groaning at the beginning and also just the what a waste of time at the end. And it would appear that things are uh, very much being um, controlled. They want to avoid as much um, controversy as possible. And no matter how much they try to smile for some pictures, the truth <laughs> of how they feel and their expressions do come across. Um, eventually and got that um, bored looking face that William always seems to have so let's go to your comments but Cindy I think the monarchy told Jamaica to go ahead and remove them ahead of William and Kate's arrival to cut down on demonstrations maybe maybe oh thank you Mara you're so sweet <laughs> I think I'm all right <laughs> um yeah William and Kate seems to be more on vacation than doing any official duties I mean what in the name of impact is actually going to come out of this trip no, no matter how you look at it whether you're looking at it from the perspective of the people of uh, the Caribbean um who are not going to get anything from this or even if, you, if you're looking at it from the perspective of uh the British public right now right now was the time for the British royal family to prove their worth to uh, the, ta the British taxpayers. In fact, the last two years was the time for them to prove their worth to the British taxpayer, to prove that they're not just an overpriced uh, uh, trinket um, and that give us pomp and pageantry, to prove that they can actually do something impactful. And they have not done that at all. And so however, however way you put it, this, this trip is just a disaster on, on, on both sides because it really just shows how out of touch they are, both with um, the, the world and these countries um, and, and, and what they're trying to do, the way they're trying to cling on um, to, to their former colonies, but also um, in terms of the British public and the way they just seem to not be focusing on a lot of things that are going on at home. For example, we, have, we now have more food banks in the UK than McDonald's restaurants. Like how wild is it that as a developed nation, we have normalized uh, food banks? It's crazy to me. Um, and, you know, there was uh, this article from the Trust World Trust. Um, they said that in February, 2021, there were over 1,300 Trust World Trusts uh, food banks in the UK, in addition to over 900 independent food banks. So that would include, you know, places like Hub Kitchen uh, that was supported by Harry and Meghan. I've also got a a Hub um, Kitchen or an extent or what's an extension of the Hub Kitchen uh, down my road, and I do try and donate there um, when I can. But it's just it, it just speaks to how tone deaf um, the palace is right now. And then also you've got the situation with. Um, Russia and Ukraine. It just was not the time for them to be hol holidaying around. Mm. Yeah, Joyce, if Harry and Meghan went scuba diving, you know that would be a report as um, Harry and Meghan wasting and vacationing on taxpayers' money. And that is exactly how they would try to spin it. Mm. Yeah, the photographers are bored out of their mind, for sure. For sure they're bored out of their mind. Yeah, HRH. Um, Beanie Man said no one wants to see that when referring to William. Uh, Emeralds, what good are they doing for the people in the Caribbean? That's what everybody would like to know. That's what everybody would like to know. Oh, Jamaica in the house. You should be very proud of your people. Uh, Vinny stumbles and mumbles thought they could replace Harry and Meghan and were determined to prove it. They saw themselves replicating Harry and Meghan's tours. Well, if you want to replicate, you, you can't compete where you, where you don't compare. And they shouldn't be trying to replicate Harry and Meghan. They should be trying to forge their own path. But they've had a decade plus to do that, and they haven't done it. So all that time they spent bullying Harry and Meghan, they should have been focusing on themselves. So they've done all the effing around, and now they're going to find out. Especially with aura glass curves. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 
Oh, you crack me up, Church Nelly. <laughs> I wish. Really? You think I have oral glass curves? I, th- I think I'm a bit flat, if I'm honest. I'm definitely not Beyonce, but thank you. Um, okay, let's move on to the next thing. Yeah, but who was it that tried to warn them? Um, it was Harry. It was Harry who tried to warn them. And I quote, speaking about the legacy of um, colonisation, there's no way we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. And I think so many people have done that, um, have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs. But I think we all acknowledge there is so much more still to do. And a lot of the issues um, surrounding all of this are actually quite easily solvable if the powers that be want to solve the issues it doesn't have to become this huge um culture war it really doesn't um but they're just going to drag it on because they don't want to give these nations their fair payback thank you so much dawn gales highly appreciate it thank you for the super sticker Uh, Lottie, I don't understand what the trip was about because I never spoke. Yeah, they they haven't given any speeches. Um, it's just been all photo ops, sitting with locals um, for photo ops, dancing for like 70 seconds for photo ops and then leaving. If you really, <laughs> you maybe want to get down to the gym and eat lettuce. Why, darling? <laughs> Why? <sighs> I'm I'm skinny because of genetics. My mum was also very skinny. So just love the way you are, darling. As long as you're healthy, that's what matters. Doesn't matter about how skinny you are. Um... Oh, hi, Daphne. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Joyce, you have a woman who does not have an identity, which is so sad that she has to copy another woman's identity. Yeah, it is sad because she's a future queen consort, you know? Um, anyone feel like William and Kate are being sent out to prove they are failures? Meanwhile, Charles is going to try and woo Harry back in as much as he can. Charles is a master manipulator. He has to see the failure. Well, this is another point that um, a couple of people online were bringing up. Could we see now in the coming weeks the whole extending an olive branch um, narrative coming back. But um, Harry's smart also, and I don't think he'll take the bait. Yes, Valerie, we are in 2022 and the royal family live in the 1950s. Probably even further than back. I'd go right, way back to the 1800s. That's, that's what they're living in. Uh, Cho, millionaires never listen to anyone but do whatever they want um, did rumour has it Naomi Campbell will go with them but now I hear another uh, professional footballer will be used yeah I, I don't think um, Naomi would Naomi's smarter than that to, to go on a tour like this um, especially given there was so much protest I think Raheem Sterling he's very young and very naive he forgets about the reaction um, that those black footballers got for missing those penalties. But I'm sure they're offering him a lot of money, so. Okay. Uh, Mona, yes, I believe Charles behind this, looking back, Charles set up and waited for Prince Andrew problems. So he and Charles can shove Queen Camilla at us. Yeah. And speaking of Andrew, um, he is due to attend Philip's memorial. Now, they are billing his appearance at Philip's memorial as his final appearance, but I can't help but feel that they will attempt to use this to test the waters and see how the public actually feel about him 
being at an official event. So it's a good way of testing it because you, in, in a way, they can always wrap this up in, well, it's his, um, you know, grandfather's memorial. So, yeah, we know um, it's Randy Andy and our taxpayer money paid for him to um, get a get out of jail card. But it's his grandfather's memorial. Um, so, oh, sorry, not his grandfather, his father's memorial. So I think that they're using this to just test the waters and see what the reaction is going to be. And if it's not too bad, I wouldn't be surprised if we will see Andrew at more events, possibly at the Jubilee, if the Jubilee goes ahead and it doesn't look like they're reading the room or that they're going to stop it. Um, if the reaction is absolutely brutal, it could well be his last appearance or at least for a very long time. So, yeah. Uh, Joyce, I had wished for bigger protests, but it was much bigger than Belize and it had some notable people there giving interviews. Well, if anything, I do believe that this will likely be the last time we see royals doing a tour of Jamaica. No matter how long it takes to have a referendum, I don't see, at the very least, if there's been any victory that we'll see another tour of Jamaica, possibly of the Caribbean altogether. Uh, Lavender, will the deportation of Windrush continue when William and Catherine return to the UK? I, I assume it will because it was only delayed because they were touring. So, yes, that's that. And, um, So it was also put out that uh, Prince Charles uh, may make plans um, to take in Ukrainian refugees at Dumfries House, um, while the Queen offers jobs at Balmoral. And as you can imagine, uh, people have very uh, mixed opinions about this. Um, people asking, well, you know, why, why hasn't this been done for British people before? We have lots of homeless people. And also pointing out, I guess, the double standards of, of how different um, refugees um, are treated. So, yes, that was quite an interesting story that came out yesterday also. Um, <laughs> yes, kittens, it's their vacation without the kids. Uh, Abby Rosemary, can you imagine the mindset of Mr. Incandescent with rage? It must be when the black people reject him. Yep. Well, what what was he expecting? Like we all know it was him that called Archie a tar baby. We all know it was him. Yes, Andrew, and the reporter said, what a waste of time. That's literally what he said. Thank you, everyone. If you're just joining us, don't forget to thumbs up, please, and subscribe. Get to 8,000 before the end of the month. That would be fantastic. Mm. Uh, Edith, it's like they gave Kate um, Megan's manual to learn before she goes outside. I mean, can you imagine that they literally probably sit in the palaces, just watching Harry and Meghan's tours. Ah, uh, very sad. Uh, Denise, the Royal Rota are doing their best to build up this tour with the Cambridges, but they are bored with it. Yeah. I mean, uh, Catherine was on the cover of the Daily Fail, so they're really trying to push it, but... Um, I don't know if it's working. Yeah, kittens, you can tell that they don't like what they're doing and that they're just fed up and bored with it. Honestly, I, I keep saying, you know, it's always the truth that sets us free. They should just come out admit there were a-holes and to Harry and Meghan, admit everything that they've done and just go away and live happily as rich aristocrats. 
Like, what is the point of all of this anymore? Uh, Marsha, can you imagine the crowd sizes on the island if Meghan and Harry would have been there? But it's good that uh, the things happened the way they did because these countries want to leave the British rule. Yeah. I mean, we all remember the uh, crowds in New Zealand for Harry and Meghan. And you've seen absolutely nothing close to that with this. I think people either um, are mad about it and you, uh, that's, that, that's a small group that showed up to the protest, who really feel strongly about it, or they just don't care and they haven't show, shown up. So they haven't shown up, um, they, they haven't shown up to, to greet William and Kate. There's like no loving, adoring crowds because this isn't the 1950s anymore. Okay, so that was that, and okay, moving on to something slightly different. So, BuzzFeed has been on the Sussex Squad radar because of the article that the journalist Ellie Hall did about Samantha Markle and Yankee Wally, and all of the drama that's been going on between those three. If you've missed it, go back and watch yesterday's uh, podcast. Um, because Yankee Wally, who was a Megan troll, started basically outing um, Ellie Hall. But um, as we know, karma is that B. And today it's come out, uh, not, not related to, to that any of that at, at all. Um, but today it's come out that BuzzFeed investors have pushed the CEO to shut down the entire newsroom. The company has offered voluntary buyouts to fewer than 30 employees, according to a person familiar with the matter who asked not to be named. The buyout is only available to reporters and editors who cover investigations, inequality, politics or science and have worked for the company for more than a year. And um, yes, BuzzFeed has about 100 employees and losses uh, of roughly 10 million per year. So... Um, not saying that it was Ellie Hall that bought that karma, but I'm just saying that's BuzzFeed going down. I did give uh, BuzzFeed credit for the few amazing stories that they have done over the years. Um, the, the Stanford uh, uh, rape case with Brock Turner. Um, there was another uh, case that they looked at that was kind of similar. So I'll give credit where it's due. But just as in general, I, I just think BuzzFeed needs to go. And pretty much any news outlet that you know focuses on on clickbait and they, they really I feel like popularize the clickbait model and are really responsible for where a lot of this um clickbait style culture has gone but back to Ellie Hall um I started looking for kind of past articles that she did about Harry and Meghan and I I found this so this is going back to June uh, 2021 and this is an article where she said Prince Harry was contradicting himself. You know, she examined interviews that Prince Harry had given over the years, um, talking about how he'd, you know, he had inconsistencies and omissions in the story that he was uh, now telling uh, the world, I guess, in reference to the Oprah interview. Um, and again, just to, like trying to spin a narrative um, about Harry and Meghan that just isn't true because I don't know what inconsistencies um, these are that she's talking about. So she's always been suspect and um, she's now been exposed and the news um, outlet that she's working for is now getting shut down. So there you go. Karma is that B. Uh, Church Nelly, this was set up by Prince Tampon. He wanted them to look foolish, allegedly, possibly. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, Cho, they've bitten off more than they can chew. They thought that it was going to be easy, mingling with brown and black countries. Then use and abuse them later. Stiffness, callousness, unrealistic is clearly seen. Yeah, you can see it very, very clearly.
<laughs> Palena, let's see if they're going to blame Harry and Meghan for the poor tour visit. I'm sure they'll find a way. Well, the only people they have to blame is themselves for how they treated Harry and Meghan. Oh, is there something wrong with the sound? Wait, some of you are saying there's something wrong with the sound and some are saying it's fine. Um, okay, there's only one of two of you that have complained about the sound. Maybe it could be the internet, sorry. Uh, thank you, moderators. Also, sorry, I forget to thank you sometimes. You do a great job. Um, Lynn, is it L Linda May? William looks bored and Catherine is overdressed. It, it did look a bit, um, yeah, she did look a bit overdressed for the occasion. I mean, I, I didn't actually hate the dress, I'd probably wear that dress. It was just a bit, um, it was a bit too eveningy for what seemed like a casual occasion. Mm. Patricia, what the heck, they're walking through the jungle. Well, they were they were in the jungle because they were doing a survival course or something. And a few people did mention um, that. I think that it was a survival course on how to like kill animals or something. Um, that's what they were there for. Um, Harper, being genuine cannot be faked. Who you are and what you have always done is the truth. I'm a Caribbean woman. I'm under no delusions of what the British Crown did globally to people of colour. Yeah. And I think most people with their eyes open um, are under no illusions either. Uh, Connie, they're doing a poor job in the Caribbean, but when have these uh, two people ever done anything at all? Of course. Um, they went to Ireland. Ireland didn't want them. They went to Scotland during the pandemic. Scotland didn't want them. And also, also the, uh, they went to Wales. Wales didn't want them. Remember the, the Welsh health minister um, who, who pretty much just dismissed their presence? And then, um, was it, didn't Nicola Sturgeon say something? I don't think she addressed it directly, but I think she did throw a little bit of shade. But, you know, they should not have been taking train tours during the pandemic when people could not move around. Anyway, on to the next thing. Um, another uh, hater YouTube channel has been brought down. Uh, this uh, account is called Sue Smith. I didn't actually know about this one. Maybe this is one of the smaller ones, uh, but Christopher Boozy did confirm that it has been uh, taken down. So that's another one gone. Um, I, I, I don't know who this particular one was, um, but that's that. And also Yankee Wally gone. So one by one. Uh, Jasmine, they think they're entitled to all the adoration by virtue of their position. They don't want to put in the work, no. And the only two members of the royal family who did want to do the work, they kicked them out. Yes, Catherine, I am wait. I cannot wait for Invictus because what you're saying is exactly true. Every photographer will be there. They are hungry. They are hungry for Harry and Meghan. I am hungry for Harry and Meghan. The whole squad is hungry for Harry and Meghan. I will literally make myself poor just buying whatever it is that Megan is going to wear. Um, Ruth, I'm waiting to see them try and copy Megan's white outfit on the balcony. <laughs> well, it's definitely on my bingo card. We should start making bingo cards. For like all of the other working royals tours going forward what they're going to wear what they're going to do what they're going to say a sharpie i thought he was giving three speeches uh i don't 
know of what well, I, I don't know exactly what was on the schedule or when they were going to talk. Um, but it's probably better that they don't give speeches at all, to be honest. Yeah. Meanwhile, Harry was hard at work a better up today. Yep. He dropped off Archie and went to work and is increasing that valuation, that $4 billion valuation. Thank you, Lucy Wynn. Yes, thumbs up, subscribe, and notifications on. Uh, yes, Kathy G, not taking um, Harry's calls is a big mistake, huge. And Charles better not think he can go wiggling his way back now. Harry and Meghan left at the perfect time. As I, I kept um, saying before, they left the Titanic. There's nothing to go back to. Uh, Joyce, Harry and Meghan are getting ready to go to The Hague and watch the reception they will be given. Um, they will also be given the security that Harry is requesting. Amen. Oh, I forgot to prepare the slide, but there was a slight update on the security uh, lawsuit. It was just, um, it came out that Harry was saying that the whole situation had caused him distress. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Still haven't gotten any official updates. Um, HRH, imagine William invited Raheem Sterling on a Royal Commonwealth tour, shaking my head. <laughs> One would assume that they are hoping that people will come out to see Raheem. William is desperate. Yeah, maybe. But this this is not a, a good PR move for Raheem. It really is not. Okay. Uh, Joyce, if the Duke of York is going to the memorial, I'm glad Harry and Meghan will not be going because they will sit Meghan next to him and use her as a photo op. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so glad. See, they've, they've basically shot themselves in the foot by not giving him security. This will not be a good thing for Harry and Meghan's brand. I agree. They need to just stay away. They need to stay away from the other members of the Unroyal Mafia until D-Day comes, to stay away. Because they are going to use them as much as they can. And it's just like, Harry and Meghan just need to let the ship sink. You escaped, just let it sink. All right. Let's Right, Twi Five. Ellie Hall latched onto Bond Sentinel investigation to steal his work so she can claim she's an investigative reporter and retain her job during company buyout closure. That is a very good point. That could be what she was trying to do, but I don't know why she thought that she would get away with it. I mean, I, I do remember reading that article and just thinking, like, what is she talking about? She did an investigation. She spoke, she spoke to two people who were already um who were already known trolls and so much of what she spoke about in her in her article was kind of known from the Christopher Boozy report so I don't know what investigation she said that she did all right Oh, thank you for saying that sound is okay. Mm. Marsha, you would think that William and Kate would stay in the UK and help people there instead of trying to win a failing popularity contest in the Caribbean. Well, that's what I've kept on saying. This this just doesn't make any sense. You know? Do you know, all of this that they're doing... They're so desperate to outdo Harry and Meghan. By the time they've realised 
that nothing that they're going to do works and they look up. They're going to look up to the red and angry faces of the British public. By the time they're, they're finished wasting their time and energy trying to be Harry and Meghan, they're going to look up and the British public are going to be fed up with them if they aren't already. Um, yeah. Uh, Twilight Five. Oh gosh, I didn't even think of that. I need to save in advance <laughs> so I can buy Megan's fashion. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, I don't know. Do I have anything that Megan has worn? I'm gonna. Do you know? What? I'm gonna go on. Um, you know those like Megan Star websites. I don't think I have anything that she's worn. I was gonna buy. You know the the t the t shirt that she wore. Um, in one of the in one of the clips, I think it was for the me you can't see. I think it was like raising the future. That was like by a feminist designer here in the UK. It was only like twenty pounds or something. Um, and there's also like um, the feminist necklace that she wore, um, like the fist pump with the female sign. I think she wore it for the Vax Live. I really want that as well. And that's only I think it was only like a hundred pounds, but it was gold. So I, d I definitely, I definitely want to get something that she's worn. Oh, great. I love the idea of bingo cards. <laughs> I'll make some cheeky ones for the next tour, if there, if there is one at all. Or should we make bingo cards for, like predictions of what's going to happen before the end of the year? The royal rodents just turn on William and Kate. Uh, Petal's interview of the Jamaican squaddy was excellent. Oh, was that um, Facts and Two Cents? I saw that they uploaded a video it's only a couple of hours ago, wasn't it, today? So was was that a, actually an interview? It wasn't just like a normal um, podcast. Well, thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah, wait, I can see it on their channel. Hang on a sec. Uh, episode 49, Jamaica is ready to kick out. So was that actually an interview that they did with someone? Okay, I'm going to watch that after I've um, come off the... Actually, let me... I'll post the link so that everyone can go and watch it after this podcast. Hang on a minute. Okay, I've posted the link and I'll pin it in the chat so everyone can go watch that. Thank you, Living uh, in the Triangle. Oh, Valerie, the Queen of Netherlands will be at the opening ceremony and the King at the closing ceremony. Wow, that is amazing. Thank you so much for letting us know, Valerie. I did not know that. What a wonderful event it's going to be. I'm going to try and find out um, where everybody can watch it from where you are. Let's try and uh, support as much as we can, please. Ooh. So was there anything? Oh, yes, there was more that I wanted to say. So Anne Boleyn um, on Twitter has been doing the Lord's work and she read um, lots of articles and books and interviews um, with Meghan's paternal family in the hopes of getting a broad understanding of just why they've been so problematic, aside from just the racism. And um, she did this really good thread and she says, here's what I think of uh, Tom Senior. She said, um, on Thomas Markle Senior, according to his ex-wife, Rosalind, he was unfaithful, a drug dealer, and not very present in his children's lives during their marriage. His son, Thomas Markle Jr., describes him as mostly absent and underscores that he partied a lot. Thomas Jr. says that he saw lines of cocaine laying about in their home as a teen. And in a video interview with In Touch magazine three years ago, alleged that Thomas Senior visited Thailand whilst married to Doria and later bragged about paying women to do some incredible things. Yeah, um, old white dude going to Thailand and bra bragging about 
paying women to do incredible things can only mean one thing. I've been to Thailand and it's very pervasive and gross. Um, what unfortunately uh, goes on with what some of these men uh, do and the way they take advantage of the women there. So uh, just absolute scum. Um, so it goes on to say Thomas Jr. and even Samantha Markle herself admit that Megan was given a much different upbringing than they were. Um, Senior put time into Megan. He also put a lot of money. He invested in ways that he never invested in them and that um, has clearly led to their resentment. Okay, so yeah, I I guess that would explain why they were feeling a little bit um, resentful, but it's not an excuse for hating your half-sister. You should be taking that up with your father. So Junior explained in his 2018 interview with In Touch magazine that Thomas Senior loans money. Um, He doesn't just give it away. It's clear that Thomas Senior expected a return on his investment with Meghan and now feels he has been cheated. Um, This is a failed business venture to him. So he he never saw her as a daughter, just as a business uh, venture. And, you know, as a parent, you're meant to invest in your children. That's just what you're meant to do or else don't become a parent. It's not a business venture. So she goes on to say, um, for, for Thomas Markle, this is business. This explains why Thomas is so hostile to Harry. Harry stole his business. This is why he doesn't care about how Meghan feels or what this will do to his grandchildren, etc. He wants his investment back. Um, when you remove all emotionally, his behaviour begins to make a lot more sense. While I'm sure that he has cared for Meghan over the years, it has not been in the traditional way a parent would or should take care for a child. It has been in the way that you would love a project. So he saw Meghan not as a not as his daughter, but as a project. Um, that is one of the characteristics of a narcissistic parent. She goes on to say, being treated like a financial asset by one's parent is traumatic enough. But when you add in the fact that white people legally own black people not so long ago in the US, it adds a whole other layer of trauma for Megan, given that she is biracial and black by US standards. I'm sure that Thomas Senior doesn't see race as a factor, as well as some white people reading this, who've also been treated like financial assets by their parents. But the wounds of objectification are too recent and too deep for it not to play some part. And she ends by saying, so while this may just be business for Thomas Senior, this is very, very personal to Megan and the people um, that love her. Anyway, these are just my thoughts so far. Um, Anne Boleyn also did a really good thread where she uh, read Samantha Markle's uh, book and she did a whole thread on that. And it really does give you a, um, a mental uh, a mental deep dive into Samantha's very weird, obscure way of thinking. And just in general, uh, the Markle clan are just a, a very damaged group of people as, as far as I can, um, oh, as far as everyone can see. So I just wanted to quickly end, uh, before, I, uh, before I end with your comments as I usually do, um, I just wanted to pay respects to those that were lost during the Westminster Bridge attacks uh, five years ago. Very uh, tragic day uh, for London. I was absolutely shocked um, to hear about this. Um, Several people were attacked and uh, PC, uh, a police officer, PC Palmer, was also uh, killed. So uh, respects um, to those that lost their lives that day, respects to the responders that um, responded uh, very very quickly uh, to the situation. Uh, we've, we've had a few attacks in in London in the last decade or the last two decades, but we always pull through. And um, so yeah, with that, I will uh, take your comments and then we will wrap it up and call it a day. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Thank you, everybody, for your um, super stickers. Right. <clears throat> Marcy, just watch and see the Sausages' success of the Invictus Games after the royal family. will be begging for them to come back. Uh, yeah, they will be, but... <laughs> uh, well, 
I don't know. I think that maybe Charles would want them to come back to make himself look good. But I don't see William and Catherine wanting Harry and Meghan to come back because they would just steal the shine. And the press obviously would want them to go back because they need the money. Uh, truth and delete, the British public are waking up to the fake narrative of the British royal family. They will try and keep it going. Yeah, of course, they're going to kick the can down the road for as long as they can. Because, I mean, wait, I thought it had a green print. Oh, yeah, this. They need to um, keep the self-serving gravy train going for as long as possible. And yeah, people are starting to see it, but it's it's slow. It's very, very slow. Okay. Uh, Carter, um, has it already been told that the cameraman said it was wasted? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did play the footage. You missed it. Uh, Marsha, Megan's clothes are beautiful. Even if I could afford things she wears, they don't make them in my size. Um, she wore a dress that was like twenty four dollars or something, and it was I can't remember what the company was, but it was one of these just um kind of regular fast fashion chains. So she has worn like a few things that are affordable and that come in different sizes. Um, if you if you just go on the fashion website and have a look through, but there's also other things um like her, like her nail polish from Essie for her wedding, and um, her perfumes like she likes Jo Malone perfumes, and also um things like books that she's read, so you can look for stuff like that as well. Oh, and like even like the bench, like I still <laughs> I still have my copy of the bench. Uh, five star girls. Yes, I bought the raising the future for me and my husband, and the and the baby future onesies for my son, and we wore them as a family for his first birthday party. Oh my god, that is so cute. Ah. Uh, Alita, has anyone seen any photos of the crowd? <laughs> Should I say like they're off? <laughs> oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this really isn't going the way they wanted to. So much for the 70th Jubilee, no? Hi, Joseph. Never late to the party. Uh, as a husband, I wear Megan Star husband shirts all the time. <laughs> Just call me copycat Joseph. Oh my God, I love you, Joseph. <laughs> Doing it for the male squaddies. Thank you very much, Joseph. Yes, Hidden Beauty. William and Kate need to stay in England and sort out England's affairs. Uh, go talk to Rishi Sunak and uh, lower my electric bills, please. That's what I need you for. Uh, Abby, no crowds and local people are saying that they wouldn't uh, be paid to even make the journey to see them. Yep. <laughs> Julia Rock. <laughs> three speeches. Does she know three facts about anything? <laughs> uh, uh, Kathy, they could at least let people use the kitchens in all those empty places, houses, to feed the hungry. Oh, uh, that would that would require them to have some kind of empathy and sympathy for the poor, which they just don't have. They'd much rather their Dickensian um, levels of poverty. Oh, in Gozi, American TV is going to show it. That's really good. Yeah, it's easy, Tom. 
It really is the sleaze. I mean, don't get me wrong. Thailand is absolutely beautiful and it absolutely stole my heart. But you do have these uh, white Western men walking around with these young Thai girls. Like you do see it very often. Um, and it's, it's just horrible. It's like they literally just go there for that. And it's like they're just they're just taking advantage of women who are um who who don't um who who don't have a lot of money and are are, are desperate to to provide for themselves and their and their families. So it's just exploitation by wealthier Western men. Yes. Yeah, Pauline, the racist behaviour towards Megan really opened everyone's eyes. And they, they've opened such a can of worms. Um, it's not just the racism, it's that that um revolving door between the royals, the press and the government that a lot of people who maybe couldn't see it before see it now. So they've really exposed themselves in more ways than one. And yeah, don't forget she gave him twenty thousand. Well, I'm sure that Megan herself would have given um her father something. Yeah, Thomas Hoggle is cold hearted, see the cue. Cold hearted. Yeah, Black Cougar. Anne Boleyn is definitely onto something. She's always onto something. She's one of the smartest um, Sussex Squad commentators on Twitter, I think. I always go to her just to see what she said that day. She has a really good way of um, analysing things. Yes, Hidden Beauty. Thomas Markle saying it is disgusting. The whole Markle side is trash and always acting up. I see why Megan cut them all off. Yeah, it's, it, it really does seem like the whole family is kind of damaged because it's all three of them. And what's weird is that they all have it in for Megan, but they don't even seem to like each other. I've never actually seen them together. It's like they all have it in for Megan and for each other. There's no love between them in that family. They're all just using Megan. Abby Rosemary, I'm in the UK and working too hard to send my son to a private school, but I don't expect him to pay me back. I just want him to do better in life. Exactly. And that's what you should want as a parent. Yeah, Denise, and you don't give money to addiction sufferers. That's enabling. That's a very good point. Um, you should watch Emily D. Baker's take on the Samantha Markle lawsuit. Oh, okay. I'll take a note of that. Thank you for mentioning. Okay, who's going to get the last word of the day? Let's wrap this up. Let's scroll down your comments. Yes, bring on the Invictus Games, Des Maps. Bring it on. Let's see them crowds that will come out for Harry and Meghan. Can't wait for it. Uh, Abby, I wonder what Elizabeth is thinking about William and Kate's fake tour. Uh, they're probably hiding all of the drama from her. So. I don't um I don't think she knows too much or they're probably just um making it seem like it's going better than what it is.
Yes, Adora. William and Kate will remain losers until they apologize to Harry and Meghan and, and admit everything, everything that they did. Hi, Thrive of Harry and Meghan. How are you? Everybody go subscribe to Thrive of Harry and Meghan. Yes, it has been a crazy day. An absolutely crazy day. It's one of the reasons why I decided to do the podcast a bit later in the day because I knew that there would still be news coming through and I didn't want to miss anything. And ultimately, um, the royals' effed up way of uh, treating Meghan is really is going to cost Charles and William the Commonwealth. You know, they wanted the spotlight and they got it. Here we are. Um. During the harassment of Harry and Meghan, one Sun reporter said they are hangers-on and don't need to support their luxurious lifestyles and had to go um, and had to go what? Um, I let out a loud shriek. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, Traveller, I don't think the Queen is aware of anything. I really don't think um, she's aware of anything. Um, okay. All right. Uh, Marsha, has anyone seen Lizzie lately? Yes, I believe that she did a Zoom call yesterday, another Zoom call. So, yeah, it's still there. But I don't, I don't think she knows what's going on with um with the tour. I don't think she's aware. Thank you so much, Lisa. You are all awesome too. Oh, thank you so much, Black Cougar. Always try to give you all the deets. All right, I really am now going to give someone the last word of the day. Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm going to go down to the burger place in my village. Get me a... Uh, Get me a hot dog and fries. Uh, Janice, William Kate's charm offensive have failed. All the royal holiday has done speed up the Republic process. Yeah. <laughs> the same will happen to the countries Edward and Sophie visit. Well, I'm pretty sure that Edward and Sophie are um, thankful that William and Kate, Catherine are getting all the heat because I've, I've only seen um, a picture of Edward come up on my timeline once. And there wasn't anything particularly controversial. It was literally just like tweeting about what he was doing and who he was with that day. So he's probably quite grateful that all the heat is on um, Will and Kate at the moment. So yeah, that is that. Um, okay, Benjamin, gonna give you the last word of the day. Good night, everyone. Duchess of success, enjoy your meal. Yes, I will enjoy my hot dog, hot dog and fries. And uh, I will see you tomorrow, everyone. Thank you so much for coming.